Okay, so on to step two. Yes, part two of uh, drawing on the surface of the clay. So I made this handy dandy cup holder. It's actually pretty easy. It's just two pieces of wood. Um, as you can see, I cut a little angle here. I have a piece of wood here, two pieces back there, and then I took uh, another piece of wood here to act as a third leg. Everybody needs a third leg, right? And I turned around and, and, and went into those cone boxes. Always use cones because in the newer cone boxes, they give you this fantastic foam. What are you supposed to use the foam for after the uh, after it's held your cones and kept them all safe? I I find it's great for you know smoothing things out, but it also works well as padding for the cup. And then I just set the cup into place. Well, not really. And before I forgot almost this step, I stamp it. Now I like to use a stamp that says uh, has a set of digits on there. That's how I identify my my work. Uh, people ask me a lot of times why I use numbers instead of signing my name. Well, that's because in today's society, you've all become just a number, either a credit card number, or a social security number, um, any kind of number, uh, account number. You are just a number. So I just sign with a number and put a little RC flavor in there. Um, now, once I have my cup in here, I then start thinking about, well, what am I gonna draw on the cup? Um, I don't ever come in really with a preconceived, preconceived notion of what I'm gonna put on the cup. I start drawing straight onto the piece using my rounded bison tool. You can use, I used to use a needle tool, I used pencils, um, and then I was, gifted this as a, as a birthday present and um, I haven't looked back since. It is an amazing piece. Uh, so if you ever get a chance to, you know, get a bison tool, get a bison tool. Um, but now I'm just going to start drawing in and like I say, I don't have a preconceived notion. I kind of look at it and think, what do I want to put on here? And um, on this one, I think I'm just going to Go ahead, I've been playing around doing like a layer of, of skulls. So I think today we'll start off with a skull. Now, at what stage should you draw into your clay? Um, at some leather part stage, you know, that that's, that's the key is leather hard, but what stage of leather hard? Because as we know, Leather hard is not just one stage. It is a multitude of stages in which the clay is at various states of dry that we would consider to be leather hard. Some people say soft leather hard, medium leather hard, hard leather hard. Uh, that's something you have to find out and it's gonna really depend on what, you know, how much detail you wanna get into your piece. I personally, I go with um, anywhere from a medium, I guess, leather hard, which is what this is, to a hard leather hard. I find the hard leather hard, <laughs> almost greenware hard, I guess, uh, is great for like really super fine details. Uh, the main issue I have with it is I don't get as deep of a line because it is a stiffer clay. Uh, this is actually not too bad. Um, because it doesn't, you know, it allows me to draw into the clay. And I do get, as you can see, I'm getting some, some clay buildup there, but it's not horrible. Now, if this was soft, you know, if this was softer, uh, I find that the, it would be almost unbearable as far as the amount that would get built up. And it's harder to control the depth, especially if you're using a super sharp tool uh, on on your piece when the clay is really really soft so and for part of what I do with the stippling and the tiny tiny dots that I put into these pieces if it's too soft you really get too deep of a hole and then I find that that hole doesn't fill very well with black underglaze or black wash 
So I go with, you know, kind of a a medium to a medium hard stage. And I'll continue to do this all the way around. Now, I would film the whole process of carving, but you would get completely bored because I end up being very quiet after a while. And it takes anywhere from uh, just under 30 minutes to over 40 minutes of carving on the surface to really get the imagery that I like into these particular pieces. But so far we're at uh, five minutes and uh, that's what I've gotten so far. Spin it around so you can look at it. Um, yep, it takes, takes time. You know, you got to really kind of, you know, especially if you're not going in with a uh, idea of what you want your piece to look like. You know, you got to think where you're going to put the lines. You know, the more you do it, the easier it becomes. I'm not going to lie to you. This, you know, the first time I did this, it probably might have took me almost an hour to do a cup because I was trying to think about how what kind of line to draw and how I was going to do the lines and uh, it just took forever and as a you know you you know it's like anything else the more you practice it the more you do it the easier it becomes and as you can see here we've got uh, I love, really have been loving this stand by the way because it gives me a place to actually rest my hand now uh, whereas before I was hand holding each piece which worked out but man after a while you're back and your shoulders and everything becomes very tense and it was very very painful so by uh, changing it out I'm able to you know by going with this I'm actually now able to work longer on my pieces than before so they like say This is uh, see the drawing on the surface. Um, and again, one of the issues that you will run into if you decide to do this is what do you do if you make a mistake? Well, your choices when you make a mistake are fairly limited. Uh, you can, of course, uh, try and erase it. Um, but if you're working in a soft clay like this, and you try to erase, eh, it doesn't work out too well. You end up with, uh, you're always almost, you know, you got to try and fill the clay back in there, and you know, this doesn't erase off too well. So if I make a mistake, uh, I either try and incorporate it, you know, make that mistake more times, or I hide it, you know, because really and truly, I might think it's a mistake, but if I don't tell anybody it's a mistake, they'll never know that that line wasn't supposed to be there, or, you know, that head wasn't supposed to be that shape. Yes, I can lie. By omission, line by omission. I'm not sitting there saying, oh, it's a mistake. Yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm not saying it's not a mistake. I'm just not telling anybody that I made a mistake. And I am not the first person to do that as far as art goes. Um, you know, it's kind of actually the thing I like to do is sometimes when you make those mistakes, it's also, uh, you get to find out where, you know, Sometimes it, it shows up as a, uh, a new, totally different way of, of working something, which is really cool. Um, you know, I find my greatest uh, successes come from failures or mistakes. So this is, I've drawn a second skull on here, and I'm going to draw a few more, fill it in, and uh, we'll come back with uh, part three. So there's part two. So far, this is what I've gotten so far in part two. I'm going to do some more, and I'll show you the final uh, the the final drawings of the skulls um, in part three when I start doing the stippling I'll show how I do that that's part two stay tuned for part three